David Ashford is joining us, the new Minister for Health and Social Care. Well, um, <laughs> the poison chalice or what? I mean, what made you want to do this? I think there's huge opportunities. I know there's huge challenges as well, and I'm not naive to take on a task without knowing that there's an awful lot of work ahead. I know it's been described many times by people as a poison chalice. Uh, well, I think my job is to make sure that the department, whenever I do leave it eventually, isn't a poison chalice for whoever comes in after me, but or not as much of a poison chalice <laughs> as some maybe refer to it now. You're planning to be there for a while, though. I mean, this, you'd like to see you know, yes, this I mean, as I, a permanent I, position for the whole term. Yes, yeah. I mean, obviously, you never know what's no. around the corner. I'm at the behest of the chief minister. But, um, I, but personally, I see myself being there for several years. Did and it, I hope during that time we can bring real and substantive change. Did it take much persuading from your behalf to take the position, which seems to be an open secret, by the way, for a lot of us in the media for the last few days. But well, you say you didn't know. Well, I was going to say it was an open <laughs> secret that I didn't know about. Uh, the Chief Minister asked me this morning um, after we had our Cabinet Office political meeting and I accepted immediately. I've never been one to duck challenges and I think this is one of the biggest challenges that government faces is how we fund and ensure that we keep funded a sustainable healthcare system. What ex expertise do you bring to the position then? I think I have various expertise. I mean, obviously, some people would say I've only been in Keys for 15 months. You've only been so in Keys for 15 months. It's a bit, of a, a bit of a shock it's pretty um, impressive. To, for me to come up so quickly. Biggest budget. Yes, it is. Yeah. But during that time, obviously, I've done various things within the Cabinet Office. The Cabinet Office covers multi-department disciplines. So I've been on the Public Sector Pensions Authority, Vice Chairman of the Public Services Commission. I've also dealt with the National Telecoms Committee for the Chief Minister and also the Investigation Gas Committee that the Chief Minister has just set up. So I have gained quite a wide range of experience across government. Would it be fair to say you're one of his apostles? No, I don't. I don't think I'm an apostle for anyone. Um, his favourites. My views. My, no, no. I, I don't. I don't think that's true at all. Okay. I don't think in politics you have favourites. To be perfectly honest, I think in politics you either get. If I if I thought I wasn't being promoted on merit, mm -hmm. and I thought the chief minister was just offering it to me because we were friends or something like that, I wouldn't have accepted the post. If I didn't believe that I can actually try and bring some substantive change and do the job, then I wouldn't do it because I don't think it'd be fair to take on a position, particularly when you're dealing with something as important as this, if you don't feel up to the job. Well, you've asked a fair few questions about health, haven't you, yourself? And you sit next to Kate Beecroft, the position's going to be reversed in this sense, because I'm sure she's now going to be asking you some yes. tricky questions. Yes, I'm, I'm sure she will, and uh, all questions are welcome. I mean, uh, you know, as a minister, I welcome questions. I think it's important that there is scrutiny within Timwood. That's not going to change, because I'm now a minister. I've said this through my entire political career, from when I was on the council to now that I believe scrutiny is absolutely vital and long may it continue. So parliamentary questions as a minister I will always welcome. Let's deal with this issue of are you in charge or not? You know, because like the whole thing with the CEO and, and the dispute between uh, him and Mrs Beecroft, uh, do you have a relationship with him already? Um, do you yes. know him well? I mean... Yes, I know Dr. Couch. Yeah. Uh, we've already had a meeting today I'm sure you to, have. Discuss, uh, to discuss various issues. It, I think we can work very, very well together. But at the end of the day, the minister is the department. Um, I want to have an approach where I involve my department members more as well. I think the department members are absolutely key. They, they are other political politicians on the department and they deserve to be involved in decision making. Do you want Pedersen back? Do you, do you want uh, Collister back? Well, get, He get wanted the, that job by the way well, didn't he from all accounts? I, I don't know. Oh, as I say, I'm Paul, not, you, Paul you've already, you, no. you, you, you knew, apparently knew I was going to be appointed before I did. So from my point of view let me let no. me get the get me get the legs under the desk first okay. and we'll think. At the moment I have asked uh, both Mrs Corlett and Mr Morehouse to remain in the department. Yeah with the delegated responsibilities that they've got now. Um, they've both accepted to do so. And as for any other department members, let me get, at least get my breath before we make that decision. And it's your choice, is it? It is. As minister, the chief minister's made clear it's my choice as to who I bring into the department. OK. What will you be reversing or changing the, from the policy that's already been set down? The meals for wheels is done, you know, mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. But, you know, uh, diabetics and all that issue. Are any of these are you against and will change or are you quite well, well, relaxed about what has happened has happened? People will know my record on the asking the questions in Keys. I have already asked for all the briefing papers and minutes around various decisions that have been made. I'm not going to come on on my very first day, what, three or four hours into the post and suddenly announce massive policy changes. But there could be some policy I changes in the to, future. I, what I want to do is I want to look 
at the rationale for all the decisions and then work out how that fits into an overall health strategy. Because the important thing is we shouldn't be making decisions in isolation. We should be making them as an overall strategy for the health care of the island and how that actually affects things further down the line. And it's you that will be making those decisions. At the end of the day, you get your advice, but yeah. you will have to sign off on it, don't At you? At the end of the day, the book stops with, stops with the minister. Yeah. And I will take the flack for those decisions. I mean, you you got your own ideas, right? The, have, you've aired some, obviously, already, but do you, will there be a radical shift away from what's been going on then? Is, is that loose enough a question to kind of give you get more out of you on this yeah I mean obviously I've got my own ideas every minister I think comes in with different ideas but like I say what's important for me is that we have a proper strategy it's not Mm. just all about me and my ideas if every time a minister turned over in a department everything just changed that'd be a recipe for disaster we have a health strategy in place that came in when the current chief minister was minister that health strategy hasn't been fully implemented There's still things to be done. I want to look very much at the digital strategy and how that can help as well. And also, a bit of a buzzword, because I know it keeps getting overused, is efficiency savings. Now, the thing with efficiency savings is in this world of political speak we have now, over the last 10, 15 years, the words efficiency savings and cost cutting appear to have got intermingled. Mm -hmm. And efficiency saving is where you deliver exactly the same service for less and I want to try and use technology and see what opportunities we have to be able to do that. This is one big super tanker that hasn't been able to change course that well because I mean the overspend's already there from, <laughs> and being signed off again presumably. You've got uh, Mr Cannon with his budgets already presumably two thirds done, maybe nine, 90% done for how much he's going to give you your department next year. Will you this time next year, was it, is this too, a too tough a question? Will you, do you think they'll be able to spend this time next year, for instance, already? Would you? Well, Paul, you're asking me to I get know, my crystal ball out on the first day. I'm trying to I see how to radical through, you're going to be. I need to look through the accounts. Obviously, yeah. in an ideal world, there would be no overspend on the Department of Health. Or you need more money in the first place, right? The key thing, well, from my point of view, the key thing is you don't just pump money in never-ending money. The UK tried that for about eight, nine, ten years, where they put money after money after money in, well over and above inflation. And what have they got out of it? Absolutely nothing. If you're going to put money into the health service, it's got to be targeted money. It's got to go where it's going to have the most effect. And at the end of the day, we've got to remember, we're running a service that is there for people's personal use and personal health. And that is why the money has got to be targeted. What's your views, for instance, would be paid to go and see a doctor? How do you, if, would you feel about that? Again, Paul, that, that's speculation. I mean, there's no, there's no proposal like that as far as I'm aware on the table. More income tax going up to pay for all this. Would you like to see that? We could spend the next hour going I, over, would you like to put a penny on income tax? You know what, because I use this the time. Would you like to put I, a no. penny on NR? Oh, okay, okay. At the end of the day, what's important is the outcome. It's not how you right. necessarily how you get there. What we've got to decide first is how do we end up with a sustainable NHS that is free at the point of delivery and is able to provide the needs of the population. That is absolutely key. And then once you've decided on the model that you want, then you can work back and look at how that model gets funded. What do your CEO and co tell you about the morale at the, in the health service over here? How, how do you feel it is? Or have you been told this sort of information yet? I'll be, I'll be blunt. Because you know um, yourself, don't you? you? Paul, you know I never mince my words. I believe it's mixed. I believe in some areas there is very good morale. And I know from speaking to constituents in other areas, is they feel the morale isn't there. One of the things I've actually said to the department today is that I want to spend the next week on what you might call a whistle-stop tour around as much of the department as I can to understand and speak to the staff and share the concerns that they've got. And then after that, go back in more depth to visit you know, the, the different areas again. What was your view on the locum story? Or, you know, how do you think before you're a minister? And have you will you be you know? Well, again, it's something that Still, can okay. be looked at. Yeah. Um, and as I've said this afternoon, Fine. I've wanted all the paperwork so that I can review what has been okay. going on in when, the department. When will we see your first repositioning? 
But how long do you think it's going to take you to be able to get up and running? Because it's obviously such a sizable department. Well, I intend to, well, in terms of up and running, I intend to try and be up and running tomorrow in terms of the ministerial ship. Yes, and quite right, a, and, and But if you mean in terms of when are we going to see some change, yes. well, I think there's already change on the table even before um, we become minister. Obviously, at Timwald, we've got the Treasury Minister's motion, which I'm fully supportive of, for a top-down review of the health service. More reviews and reviews and reviews. But... No, I, I think this is different. Um, this is the first time that I can recall where a motion has been worded in this way to look at the overall service. And I think the way the Treasury Minister has phrased it is quite correct, that you are reviewing the service itself. And so I'll be fully supportive of that, obviously. And I think it will be of great benefit to the department. Okay, finally, what, what, give me a timescale. Within six months, should we see some real policy shifts or new policies or your policies coming through? How long do you think it's going to take? I'd be very disappointed if we don't start seeing some form of change in six months. Um, you know me, I'm, I'm always a very impatient person to get things going. I want to look at our strategy. I want to drive things forward. And I think there is huge amounts of change that needs to come. But there's huge amounts of opportunities. OK, well, you got this ministership, right? Do you think... It, it went back to the poison chalice almost at the beginning that nobody else there wanted it because this could have been the reshuffle moment and you could have been given something uh, more interesting or less, you know, getting, getting a lot of flack straight away. Do you, do you appreciate that you may have been <laughs> given well, this by default? Well, that sounds well, wrong. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That nobody else wanted to take it. I don't think, I, I mean, I, I don't think, you know, that, that I think my colleagues, if they'd been offered it, I'm sure they would have taken up the challenge. I think it's a bit unfair to suggest that my colleagues would all run a mile and hide under the table and not want to take the job. Well, not, I'm sure if it had been offered to someone else, they would have. Uh, my understanding is I'm the only person the Chief Minister's offered it to, yeah. and obviously I accepted straight away. I'm and, not running away from the And you'd challenge. be happy to say that, for instance, sorry, if you had an offer down the line, would you be OK to move? Because obviously Mrs Beecroft said she didn't want to move at all. She was definitely for, for health. My point of view is, um, I've said this in interviews with you before, and in fact, I think the last time I said it, you called it a very political answer um, on my, my one-year report, but yeah. it's actually come to fruition. I've always said that I will do any job oh, yeah. that, uh, you know, that yeah, I'm yeah, asked yeah, yeah. to do or none. Okay. And I've proved that today, that I haven't run away from what is probably one of the most challenging jobs in government.